The shop has become very, very crowded. I'm building two vans from scratch. I'm refurbishing a third. There's three or four of us working at a time. It's crowded. We got a lot of material in here. But luckily, uh, I brought uh, an idea from my old photo studio days. Everything in this shop is on wheels. So it does make it relatively easy to reconfigure when the time comes it's necessary. Uh, here we had to build a very rudimentary spray booth so that we could get the tongue and groove ceiling boards in Mr. and Mrs. Sprinter van spray painted. So Ron got all suited up. He wore his masks and we built this spray booth right in front of the bathroom door, which meant that you had to make your plans because once these walls came down and he started spraying, you were not gonna be able to use the bathroom. So you better know when you gotta go. Plan ahead. Anyway, we got a, uh, an air filter from the depot and we put a box fan above it. We dropped the walls down and we were able to suck that paint spray and residue up and get trapped in the filter. It worked quite well in the course of doing all those ceiling panels we did clog up two of these filters from the depot. So uh, our, our basic rudimentary system worked, but it was just another indicator that told me I've got to get to bigger space and I'm working on that. I've got some plans in place, in motion. It's a little too soon to talk about it, but I can't wait to tell you. My good buddy, Lou Amato, over at Jersey Shore Fabricators, he did all this Raptor liner. I gotta give him a plug, he does great work. You know how dull and gray this plastic can get on sprinters. So I had him do the, all the plastic and all the bumpers all around, and I had him do the lowers as well. And like I say, Lou is just crazy. He tapes off, he, he makes sure he shoots inside all the seams he wraps all the seams down here. He did the mud flaps as well, and he just makes sure he covers everything. He did the inside of the mud flaps. He's just very, very detail oriented. He's fastidious. Then he gets around the back here, and if you're familiar with the Sprinter at all, this is a white hinge. It's painted white like the body of the, the van. Well, he's looking at it. You got the red tail light a white hinge, and then the black Raptor. He didn't like the way that looked. So what did he do? He broke out his spray gun and he spray painted it black. Now you've got a nice smooth continuity. It looks great, it looks clean. Same thing down here. He knew the minute he started shooting this Raptor on the bumpers and made it all nice, new and contemporary, my trailer hitch was gonna look like shit. So. He taped it off, he scrubbed off all the rust, and he spray painted that as well. I didn't tell him to do that. He took it upon himself. This is Lou, he does everything like it was his own. Gotta give him a plug, he's good. So we just got done installing our extension jams, cut the holes in the roof, and uh, put our extension jams in. And now in this case, this is Sam's ProMaster van. Uh, 159 wheelbase, extended chassis, high roof. Sam is tall. So we had to make some decisions. Uh, I've covered this in the past. We only have one half inch plywood on the floor of this van. There's no insulation on the floor of this van. In order to compensate for that, we're gonna send the van out and Lou over at uh, Jersey Shore Fabricator is gonna spray the undercarriage of this van with lizard skin. Ceramic coating will offer some semblance of insulation, better than nothing, right? We'll see how that works out. Uh, the reason for this is because we only have X amount of height in these vans. As I said, Sam is tall. Show off. Uh, so where do we give up? Uh, we decided that the, the insulation, the best part of the insulation should be up in the ceiling because of the sun beating down. Sam spends a lot of time out in the deserts of the Southwest. 
So you can always throw, put a throw rug down on the floor if it's cold, okay? And then the ceramic coating underneath should help with any heat bouncing up from the bottom. So we are going to work with what's uh, up above his head. Promaster ceiling chassis struts are not very deep. They're shallow. So I had to build down with a three quarter inch strap or stringer, okay? Just so I could gain some depth up here for my insulation package, uh, which will be Thinsulate, obviously. First thing that goes up against the underside of the roof this is uh, Thinsulate. Then I put in a module. I put in this, this encapsulated ceiling panel, which is comprised of a quarter inch of plywood. And then I glued a half inch rigid foam board to the back of that plywood. That half inch rigid foam board obviously is insulation, right? But because it's rigid and it's glued, fully glued, it offers some structural support to that quarter inch plywood. And the reason I was concerned about that is because I skipped every other ceiling strut in this van. In the ProMaster, these ceiling supports are they look like they're randomly placed. There's no rhyme or reason to it. In a Sprinter van, they're relatively consistent as to where they're placed and spaced. I just wanted to quickly show you, this is the ceiling inside the Sprinter van, okay? Same concept, same design as what's over in the ProMaster, uh, but instead of using the padded panels between stringers, we here we've got tongue and groove, it's poplar, tongue and groove, spray painted. And then our stringers here are also painted. This is half inch MDF with a round over and then sprayed. Beautiful. This is truly uh, indicative of a sailboat. This is what you'd see inside the galley, the cabin of a sailboat. And uh, well, you can't really see it here, but these, these roof stringers are spaced out a little more consistently than they are in a ProMaster. So I'm skipping every one, so it looks a little more uniform again, more like a sailboat with a, a clean white ceiling and a, a support stringer going across. So the great span like that and all my insulation weighed on a piece of quarter inch plywood, I was afraid that would bow, it would, it would give way over time. So now with the half inch rigid foam fully glued, I think we're good. Remains to be seen, but my panels are removable. If there's a problem, I can replace them. Um, and I chose a rigid foam that had foil backing. Okay, so now this foil backing on the rigid foam takes the place of my Reflectix. No need for the Reflectix layer because that's an eighth of an inch thick and we don't have that kind of material. We don't have that space. So these panels are designed to fit right up inside of these struts. So it's a flush fit to the bottom of the strut. And then I've got a stringer that will also be wrapped. The stringer gets bolted with plus nuts, okay? This is actually what holds, this one stringer will hold two panels. So if you needed to drop one panel and you take the one stringer out, that will leave two panels loose. So you've got to take a little bit of care uh, when you start to remove these panels or installing them. You do, do the first one, then you work your way back. You'll see, I'll do a video. Uh, but that's how this system works now. So we've got a lot of efficiency with these ceiling panels. And uh, this, is a, this is marine vinyl. It's very durable, it's washable, and I went with the foam-backed marine vinyl this time. One more layer of insulation. I'm being very generous. This is an eighth of an inch of foam, but it's gonna help. It's gonna help with sound. It's gonna help with insulation. It's gonna help if Sam decides to do a yippee and he's gonna hit his head on the ceiling, uh, it'll be padded. Uh, Cause you know, when you're in a humble road van, I think you do a lot of yippies. So, of course, 
You know, I'm a big proponent of not stressing my wires, especially my big forots. I like them to go travel on their own. They've got a grain, they've got a memory to them, and uh, I want to respect that and work with it. Uh, of course, this particular case, if I didn't want to stress the wires, my BMS would have to be right here. Well, that's not happening. So I've got to find a way that I can make this cable bend to where I want it within reason. You know, if my BMS was here, this is the BMS. Okay, this is the brains of the battery system, protects it and everything else. If my BMS was there, I could plug it in and then there's no stress, everybody's happy. Well, I'm not putting my BMS there because that is where Sam needs to put his storage seasonal, whatever the case may be. BMS goes back here. From here back, all across the van is physical plant. It's off limits to storage. So all Sam's storage is all up in here. He's got a second deck right here for storage. Got storage under here. Look at this room in here. He could hold ballroom dance classes back here if he wanted to. That's how much room we have for storage. So I've got to find a way to make this cable bend nicely so that this goes in there right here. Uh, I'll keep you posted on how that works out. But look at how this fit in here. It's almost laughable. I've got quarter inch pre-finished maple pressed up against the insulated wheel well. Then I've got one inch 8020, then my battery, another one inch 8020, and then my water tank rammed up against that, rammed up against the other wheel well over there. It's, I mean, the entire fitment left me with an eighth of an inch at the most left gap. Unbelievable, it just, it fit perfectly. And this is a beautiful recipe uh, for future installs as well. This particular water tank is 45 gallons. You've got your Mama Luke battery in a ProMaster. This is an ideal situation. It's sitting right on the axle. You can't put this stuff in a better place. This is the 3012 inverter from Xantrex, 75 pounds, heavy, right over the axle. The battery, the inverter, the water, these are three of the four heaviest, of the five heaviest items in a van. The refrigerator's 100 pounds, typically. The refrigerators that I've been asked to put in. And your countertop, uh, that's heavy. So you wanna balance all these heavy items out in the van. I gotta check and see if my, my uh, mic is still working. You can hear me? I don't know if that's good or bad. So this is the air conditioner location in Sam's ProMaster, okay? And as you already know, Sam's tall. And so we had to make a small accommodation for Sam in this van for his air conditioner. And here's what I mean by that. Let me get these clamps off of here. Cause we just, we just added spacers behind this thing and glued up the whole thing to the underside of the van ceiling, van roof. So here's what we're gonna do. If I put my, my ceiling panels in the van, they're flush to right there and we put our stringer in, right? I just explained that. Then I would put my air conditioner internal control unit. You know, you're all familiar with this kind of a control unit. So if that went in here, okay, look at this. We just, we just added or took away two and a half inches worth of ceiling height Sam wouldn't be able to fit under here. This is the new, um, you remember that Coleman NDQ uh, that uh, James and Stephanie from Fit RV, they talked about it. They put it in Lance like a year or so ago. And ever since then, you haven't been able to get this thing. Well, we got three of them. So uh, from what I was told, that they were the last three on the market. The Coleman NDQ, super, super quiet air conditioner. Okay, back from that tangent. So here's what we're gonna do. In order to uh, 
get Sam the ceiling height he needs. We can't mount this thing on the underside of our finished ceiling as you typically would. So what we're gonna do is we're going to recess this control module up into the ceiling and we save him an inch and a quarter of uh, ceiling height. And you know what? That just might be the difference between scraping his head and not scraping his head. It'll also alert him to when it's time for a haircut. Anyway, that's how we're gonna do this. So we put this, this piece in, this three quarter inch plywood is fully glued to the underside of the chassis. As you know, when you mount an air conditioner, the inner plate bolts in to the upper unit. So you just create a compression sandwich and everything in between it is held in place by that plate and the air conditioner. Uh, so that's what this is all about. This has transferred a lot of the flex. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this control unit right up inside of the ceiling struts, okay? So we've got return here and here. Now we've got our cold air blowing out this way and we've got cold air blowing out that way. And of course you can send it straight down. Our concern with our, our pickup stringer here, the cold air blowing on that stringer is gonna create condensation. God knows where it's gonna create that, it'll be running. So we've also developed a plenum or a shroud system that's gonna direct that air down into the cabin away from our stringers. We are literally gonna enclose this. We're gonna block it off from the rest of this ceiling channel. And, uh, and we save, like I said, we save an inch and a quarter. Sam's happy. We've got a new system that we can employ in a future build and everybody's happy. I just picked up this uh, wire rack. Uh, it's, it's good for me when I'm running wire in the van because I can actually put all of my wires in the van and pull from a designated point. Uh, what I mean by that is my my breaker panel is gonna be right here on a wall. This, this uh, pantry is gonna be hidden behind a wall, and here's the bedroom. Well, right above the pantry in that wall will be my breaker panel. So all of my wires have to come from the rear of this area. So I basically pull from here. Uh, you can see everybody starts in this spot uh, and then they travel around the van, obviously. So this is nice because at this point in time, uh, I know what gauge wire I need for what it is I'm running. Uh, so they're all right here. It's not meant for this heavy a wire, but uh, it serves me well because I can get all of my different wire gauges, both uh, DC and AC wires on this rack in the van and it makes it very easy for me to reach over and just get whichever gauge I need and pull it. It saves me a lot of time. Uh, my wiring in the sprinter, everything is coming off my breaker panel. By the way, this is the size of the breaker panel that I'm using. It's the same one I used in van number one. I love that panel. It's an AC-DC combined panel. I thought about putting individual panels, one for AC, one for DC, uh, but I, I just like the look of this one and I think it simplifies things. The AC is right along here in a column and then the DC is in two or three columns. It's very nice. But this is the panel. Uh, it's about three and a half inches deep. So this is going to be mounted on an angled wall piece right there. So all my wires have to start here at the panel. So if you noticed in the other van, uh, I, I'm running those wires. I pull that wire. Once they're all pulled, then I go in and I make nice. Okay, everything needs to look neat. It has to look organized. You have to be able to attack one wire at a time if you need to. Uh, so that's what I do. You plan your routes, right? Get all those wires run 
and I had to pull a few back. Oh, that's not the right place to put it. Pull it out, run it a different way. Uh, but I like to keep everything almost all running the same way down and across. A couple of instances where we go up and over and there's other instances where we go down and across. These are very funky panels in a Sprinter van. There's only one little place you can get through. There's actually one chase here and a separate chase here. Are you even seeing that? Barely, barely. Let me send you over real quick. Right here. This downspout, it's large enough for one or two wires. I got one big one in there. So your chase comes down one side and then comes down the other side and you can't get through this is a stop right here. You can get past. Here's another one. So that's Sprinter. That's why it takes a little longer to, to wire a Sprinter. You can't get past there. There's some stuff there, right? Sprinter. Anyway, where was I? Over here now? Okay. In any van, in any van you're wiring, yeah, look at me. I got... This is double insulated, okay? And then I put a loom on it for further protection, okay? Now these wires are not supposed to move. Once you've got them all set in place, you've got to lock them down. There should not be any movement because that's saw action, cutting action, right? Over time, you hear it? Over time, you're going to wear through these coverings. Your protection will be hugats. So what I do, and I suggest to you, when you get everybody wired in, wherever you've got these edges, put a little something, something in there. It could be anything that's going to help you protect those wires a little bit further, right? Everywhere they pass by something that's sharp, put a little something in there. And this here, I'm using a little bit of foam. Now, foam to foam may squeak, so be smart about what you're using. This is just for um, illustrative purposes. But you get the point. Keep these wires nestled. Make sure these wires never have a sharp edge they got to contend with for any length of time. Kabish. Another thing I like to do in my builds is include a DC sub panel. I send a feed over from the main panel. So I got a breaker that says DC sub panel. I bring that over. Now that feed is heavy enough to accommodate all the circuits I want to use here, plus future circuits. Now we can't go crazy. Uh, what I use this panel for is all my lighting. All my lighting, LED lighting in the van is coming off of this panel. The other thing you could run here is uh, I can run a line, which I did in the Vagabond van, their Fiamma awning. I'm a big proponent of the manual awning, okay? This isn't that difficult, okay? This is not hard to do. But some people may get tired of this and they want to just do this, okay? This comes with another set of problems. But if that's your choice, I run the line for you. It goes right down to where that Fiamma box is where you would include the motor. You can buy a manual Fiamma and then add the motor later. Wires will be there for you. I did it in Vagabond van. The other thing that's coming off of this, uh, we boost antennas, any of your satellite searching equipment, if you want uh, cable antenna boost, whatever boosters, you come off of this. It's all low, low, low consumption. And this sits behind my curved, flexible, removable cabinet panels. So it's never in the way. And that panel comes down. You want to run another line, tie it in, run it through. You're off to the races. The dinette saga continues. Facing dinette table, right? That's going to be moving around so you can get in and out. Well, here we have a pantry, a slide out pantry that comes from the residential kitchen world. Okay. What does that mean? It means it's 24 inches deep. And as you can see now, I've got it flushed up with the refrigerator. It can fit alongside the refrigerator, right? But in doing so, now my dresser's out here. I can't get, I can't get in and out of the seat because 
Look, we're flush to this. This is no good. You remember what I said about stepping from one space to another? You come through a narrow and you open up into a bigger space. Architecture 101, as they say. So right now, I got 24 inches in this hallway. And that sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. But when you need to get past the table that's here and past this corner to sit in that chair, yeah, not so much. Not good, not for the plaza anyway. So what's the solution? Well, Ron spent an afternoon uh, because we had two of these. He took one of them apart and he made a little baby one. Look how cute this is. So now what that means is we back this up. This baby is going to be one inch. Again, level, level, level. We step. So now we got this little baby. He shortened it. He took the whole thing apart and he shortened it. Look how easy it is to get in now. So now what we're going to do, look how, now the, the metal railings no longer fit. So do we cut them? Do we rebend them? No. Ron got some pre-finished maple and he made a whole new set of drawer sides. And they just, they work just the way they did. But now we've got these sides. How's that go in there, Ron? See, I had to touch it. There you go. That's why they're angled like this because the design of this thing to adjust the shelves is to swing them out like that. So now we go from 24 to 30. And you're gonna need that because you're gonna have a table here, the dining room. So now look, there's plenty of room to come in and sit down. And what we're doing is I'm leaving six inches elbow room. So there's a countertop here, most likely gonna match the countertop in the galley. So there's your elbow six inches. This is six inches. And then I've left six inches between the refrigerator and this item. Okay, another six. This is going to be a hanging closet. Just enough room for a sport jacket, a couple of windbreakers. That's all you need. Hanging clothes, maybe a nice shirt. Six inches. That's it. There'll be room down here for more storage. So six, six, six. 18 inch wide dresser. Now there's two drawers, top drawer, and then a nice deep one. The bottom is gonna be a false panel for the Wabasto. This is all because we moved the battery from back there to up here. We were gonna house the water tank underneath the galley. It took too much drawer space to do that. So we decided to move the water tank back here and we put the battery up here, worked out just fine. Um, but in doing so, we had to make a few changes. I had to redo that whole galley. Not a problem, it's 80-20, it's a big erector set. So all I did was take it apart, cut it, redesign it, put it back together. Pretty cool.
so that's where we stand now. This van is 95% uh, wired. Sam's, uh, this is Sam van. Sprinter van is wired, it's finished. This one I'll have finished in the next couple of days. Uh, and then I'll take you through that and see what's going on. You don't want to hear that. I think that's enough back here. Mm. Ooh. This is me standing on the box, showing them how I'm cheating. Some people like to have this. It's not a problem, but then you got to go and do it again. So I just wanted to point this out. Beautiful job. Uh, Ron did such a beautiful job spraying these tongue and groove panels that it almost looks fake. It almost looks like that four by eight piece of shit you'd buy at the depot. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna, we're gonna see how that works out. That's what we're doing. We're gonna see how that works out. That was very good. Why don't you end every segment like that, you moron? What else? What else do we do? So in other words, once we got this all assembled and cut out, it left us with a nice, tight, solid piece. Just like a, just uh, do it again. A lot of people put the air conditioners over the bed uh, because of ceiling height. Uh, you typically are not going to stand up and jump on the bed like monkeys. But this is where we put it in this case. And uh, <laughs> this is the hole in the sprinter van where the air conditioner goes. This is the fourth take, by the way.